when they come into a foreign office building, they see the past. Uh, you know, a recent example, uh, you know, a senior Irish diplomat uh, who was visiting the Foreign Office for a meeting about the UK's Food and Nutrition Summit. Towering over the meeting table was a portrait of Lord Trevelyan, famous for wanting to limit the UK's financial exposure to the Irish potato famine. The significance of being in that room with that portrait meant something to that Irish diplomat. We should be conscious of that. We're a mid-sized country that needs strong and important relationships with our partners but in, in, in the European neighborhood, but also beyond countries like India, countries like China, countries like Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico. And we need to create a context where they come and meet us and look to the future and not see us as, you know, as, as a country trapped by our past. Should the Foreign Office be abolished? There's a report out today saying it should be replaced with a Department for International Affairs with fewer colonial era pictures on the wall. It's according to a report from former diplomats and officials. One of them, former Director General at the Foreign Office, Mwam, uh, Mwazam Malik, joins me on the line now. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. Thanks uh, for having me on your show. Uh, so what's wrong with the Foreign Office? So I think our core point is that the UK's place in the world is changing. We've exited the European Union. Uh, global power is shifting towards the east. Geopolitics has become very bumpy and the rules based order is under a great deal of pressure. And at the same time, the UK remains a very open and interconnected economy, society, uh, polity. And therefore, we need to think about the world that we're moving to, how the world changes by 2040 and imagine the structures and institutions that we need to safeguard the UK's prosperity and security as we look forward. Fundamentally, I, I think our contention is that now that we're out of the European Union, um, our future has more in common and there is more that we can learn from countries like Japan, Switzerland, Canada, uh, Norway, countries that are what we've dubbed offshore nations. So countries that are on the borders of, of significantly large economic blocks who need to have good economic and political relationships with those blocks, but also need to be able to look uh, at the rest of the world um, and I, our contention is that as you look towards 2040 and that how the world is changing, that actually we need to rethink how we do our, our international affairs. It's not just about the foreign office, it's about the whole of government, because, of course, every bit of government does international because it has to. The Home Office has an international wing, DEFRA has an international wing, so on and so forth, necessarily so. So all of this means that the structures that we have inherited uh, in, in the shape of the foreign office need to be modernised and we need to look ahead. Taking all that to, into account, and all the changing, you know, the changing international threats and changing international relations, um, how does changing the sign outside the building make any difference? Going from being the Foreign Office to the Department for International Affairs, what what difference would that make in practice? Well, in practice, um, in fact, so in practice, modernising is about looking ahead. Okay, if you go to the Foreign Office, you know, the FCDO, the 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 uh, the name, the history, the building. Uh, the pictures on the walls, these all smack of our past. And our contention is that we should be proud of our past, warts and all, but we should look ahead and we need to imagine ourselves for our future. So that means kind of, you know, so, so changing names, changing, modernizing buildings, taking some pictures down, etc. This is fundamentally about the space in which we work, in which our civil servants and our politicians work, but also the space into which we invite foreign diplomats and partners. You know, we come into our foreign office building, they see the past. Uh, you know, a recent example, uh, you know, a senior Irish diplomat uh, who was visiting the foreign office for a meeting about the UK's food and nutrition summit. Towering over the meeting table was a portrait of Lord Trevelyan, famous for wanting to limit the UK's financial exposure to the Irish potato famine. The significance of being in that room with that portrait meant something to that Irish diplomat. We should be conscious of that. We're a mid-sized country that needs strong and important relationships with our partners, but in, in, in the European neighborhood, but also beyond countries like India, countries like China, countries like Indonesia, Brazil, Mexico. And we need to create a context where they come and meet us and look to the future and not see us as, you know, as, as a country trapped by our past. I suppose some people think that this is all just sort of symbolism over over policy that actually the decisions made in the foreign office are about who the foreign secretary is 
whether, uh, the, you know, David Cameron facing lots of questions about uh, decision making on Israel, on uh, trying to uh, persuade other countries to fund Ukraine. What is on hanging on the walls of what the place is called doesn't really make any difference, does it? I mean, France's uh, mi uh, foreign ministry has been based in the same building since 1885 or something. Nobody, uh, 1855 even, it's been in the same building. Um, you, you're not saying that the foreign office would be better if it was just in some corporate blank walled glass building, would you? So, so Matt, I, I, I was simply answering the question that you asked. I'm glad to talk about policy. Um, fundamentally, the pamphlet that we've published today with the UCL Policy Lab and, and Hartford College Oxford is about policy and about how the UK does international affairs. Uh, this question of modernising the buildings and so on is, frankly, you know, one amongst many, many items. Our core point is that we need to, as we look to 2040, think about what are the things that will shape the UK's prosperity and security. And there are things like conflict, there are things like climate change, there are things like development, there are things like international institutions. And it's fundamentally about how we build partnerships to deliver those long-term objectives. Those are the things that are going to determine our future security and prosperity. We need to focus on those, not some nebulous idea of national interest, which is malleable and changes every five minutes. We need ministers who are clear deliverables over the long term. And we need to create institutions that actually can deliver impact, real world impact beyond a five year term of a parliament. So we need to use agencies, we need to create a development bank. You know, we're a very open country, we're a very interconnected uh, economy, polity, society. Our future is intimately linked to what happens outside our borders. We've got to pay attention to that. We need skills in our civil service and our diplomacy, that, that reflects yeah. our country, but also can, can go out and talk to the world. And we need to resource it properly. So government has a longstanding commitment now to spend 2% of our GDP on okay. defence. That's the right commitment to make, but we should think we should balance that with a 1% commitment to soft power and international engagement. Marzan Malik, good to speak to you. Director, uh, former Director General at the Foreign Office, who's uh, written uh, this report today, which I should point out, um, uh, it was this report which raised the idea of changing the building, taking the pictures.